Please welcome our next author, John Stoltz. As many of you know, uh, 2011, I uh, released a trilogy of uh, works called Shadow War of the Night Dragon. Strangely, nothing but the prologue has survived until now. Now to remind people, the prologue, the first sentence of that was 153 words long, used the word black 11 times, second sentence was even longer, and the third sentence was, which is to say it was a dark and stormy night. I don't know what happened to all those books, words about cults, uh, words about war crimes, something about Geneva Conventions. Be that as in May, as I was looking through uh, my files, I found not the prologue, but chapter one, and that is what I'm going to read for you tonight. Night. Right? <laughs> Night had come to the city of Stanilaharia again, a thing it had persisted in doing even when Emperor Blinken II had banned it from doing so in the same edict in which he had also banned Tuesdays. <laughs> Coincidentally, today was a Tuesday. And on this Tuesday evening, darkening and with storm clouds on the way, Weebly Indigo found he had a visitor waiting for him when he returned home. No, he said to his visitor, Guat Northen, as he trudged up the rickety stairs to his apartment, which was not really so much an apartment as a hole in a building with a door. <laughs> you don't even know what I want, protested Northen. I might want a cup of sugar. Do you want a cup of sugar? Weebly asked. Well, no. Norton said, what I want is for you to move out of your apartment so my cousin can move in. Right, Wheatley said, uh, moving past Norton to his door, which was really not so much a door as it was a series of weedy planks on a hinge. No. Why do you even want to live here, Norton exclaimed to his neighbor. This is a terrible building. It's about to fall down. building in Cheapmost. Cheapmost was the name of the neighborhood, which ironically was not the cheapest place to live in Scandalaharia, that honor belonging to the neighbor to the west, Cheapmoster. <laughs> it's haunted. You can hear moans at night. That's the pipes. It's filled with disre disreputable characters. Well, that's accurate, Weebly said, fixing Norton with a stare. Yes, all right, I walked into that one, Norton said. But still, why do you want to live here? Weebly sighed and pointed due eastish. What is one block away? The cheap most market square, Norton said. And what do I do? You're a melon monger. And what does that mean? That you mong melons? <laughs> Weebly opened his mouth and then closed it again. It sounds so unseemly when you put it that way, I said. <laughs> right, Norton agreed, those poor violated melons. <laughs> anyway, I sell melons at the marketplace, one block away from this building where I live. I'm not following you, Norton said. We really saw it again and reached for his do doorknob, which was not so much a doorknob <laughs> as a round knot of woody despair that one could grip and pull. <laughs> Come in, Guad, he said to his neighbor. There's something I want to show you. He pulled at his doorknob and entered into his home. Norton followed. Weebly's apartment was a single small space which might have been called a studio if it was rented by a scholar or a garret if rented by an artist, but Weebly mocked melons, so it was just a room. In one corner, 
It was a single narrow bed with a thin mattress and an even thinner blankets. In the opposite diagonal corner was a kitchen nook with a few modest plates, a sink, and a cupboard. There was a table that could fit two people, but there was only one chair for it, and that chair had not one, not two, but three short legs on it. <laughs> That's what makes you laugh. In the third corner of the room, there was a small contingent of melons, manufacturer samples, if you will. The final corner of the room was screened off. That was the toilet. Not really so much a toilet as a gap in the floorboards that you could poop in. As long as you didn't mind the pipes screaming at you as you did so. Overall, the room exuded a vibe that said, Perpetual Bachelor, or maybe I'm so alone, or possibly I will die here one day and no one will notice because the smell from the screaming toilet hall is already just that bad. <laughs> Depending on which floor you stood in. <laughs> Norfin stood in the middle of the room and gaped. This is so much nicer than my room, he said. Forget my cousin. I want to live here. We may nodded at this and reached toward the shelf over his bed, which featured two books, The Adventure of Cungus Melifenus, Gentleman and Scholar, A Romance of Two Nations by Z. Znu, and The Practical Guide, Guide to Melimongery by Znat Zu, no relation, <laughs> and a scroll. He grabbed the scroll and walked it over to the table and then looked for an orphan who had disappeared. Tuad, he called. Your poop gap is so wide, Norton said from behind the toilet screen, and there's hardly any screaming. <laughs> Get out of there and come over here. Norton did as he was told and came over to the table. Now, Weebly said and pointed to the unrolled scroll, what do you think this is? Norton peered at it. It's a lease. That's right, Weebly said and pointed at some specific wording. There's the bit that says how long the lease is for. What does it say? Two years, Norman said. And when did I sign it? Six months ago. How many months are left on the lease? Three, Norman said, hopefully. Eighteen, Weedley corrected his neighbor. I was close. Not really. <laughs> Surely there is a clause under which this lease can be broken, Norman said, and scanned the document. Perhaps if you murdered someone, there must be someone you want to get rid of. <laughs> there might be, Weedley <laughs> admitted, staring at the back of Norman's skull. Norman suddenly gasped and stood straight up. What is it? Weedley asked. What? Norman said and looked over at Lee Lee as if seeing him for the first time. Oh, nothing, I just remembered there is some place I need to be. Lee Lee pointed at the lease. So you finally understand that I won't be here for a while. Yes, I've read the lease. So you'll find somewhere else for your cousin to live. Yes, yes, Norman said. He will be deeply disappointed, especially after I tell him about your luxurious poop gap. Maybe don't tell him about that. No, of course you're right, Norman said. Why make him jealous? <laughs> All right, good. Weebly thought about it for a moment, and then went over to his melon cache and picked out a likely board. Here, he said, how, handing the melon to his neighbor, to celebrate our new understanding and to celebrate you not bothering me about giving up my room to your cousin for at least the next year and a half. Norman took the offered fruit. I've never been given a melon before. It's a very high honor, we assured him. I don't know what to do with it. You could mong it, we <laughs> suggested. Norman looked confused all the way to the door and then out of it, clutching his melon like a globe full of mystery. Weakly closed the door on his neighbor, then went back to the table, rolled up the lease, and put it on his shelf. And then he made himself a simple evening meal of lentils and melon slices, availed himself of the screaming poop gap in the floor, and closed the louvers against the thundering storm that had finally arrived. He lit a candle and stood by his bed, looking at his two books and trying to decide whether he was in the mood for adventure or practical melon mongery. He had almost but not quite decided when his door, which was suddenly really not so much a door as a very surprised collection of splinters, <laughs> was crashed in and a squad of the Emperor's Guard flooded in, grabbed Weebly, forced him to the ground, 
he put a bag over his head. They stood him up and dragged him out into the night. We leave his apartment, which was really not so much his apartment anymore, became unexpectedly vacant. The poop gap in the floor screamed as if in mourning, as lightning flashed in the sordid night sky. I believe it's a trifle unfair for John to use his uh, bestseller money to present his chapter in 4DX. <laughs> but I'll allow it. 